the universe? Is it a hive of activity containing billions upon billions of inhabited worlds, all pointing sophisticated space weaponry at us, ready to fire at any second? Well, no. Actually, since that rather large bang at the beginning, the universe has become a bit of an astronomical bore. Well, until now. By now you may be wondering who I am, or not, as the case may be, but I'm going to tell you anyway. My name is Professor Hermann von Flugenhergen, so looking for... <clears throat> um, it's German, on my parents' side. I'm an astrophysicist, which in layman's terms means that I use state-of-the-art, extremely expensive scientific equipment to confirm the results people achieved hundreds of years ago using a telescope and a good sense of direction. But I digress. Many years ago, I made a startling discovery. I discovered that we're not quite as alone in the universe as we had previously thought. And now, if you will permit me, I will recount the story of how I discovered that there is life on Mars. The date is December 31st, 1966. The date is January 1st, 1967. The year of the summer of love. Not that much of that came my way. I was walking home from the London astrophysicist's biannual New Year's party. Everything was as it was. Or was it? Or was it? As I walked, using my preferred one foot in front of the other technique, I began to hear a strange, otherworldly sound. Look, could you stop that? I'm trying to listen to something. Oh. Sorry. And then there it was, a distinct hum, and it was getting closer. I couldn't believe my optic receptors. It was a flying saucer. A genuine, highly realistic flying saucer that was definitely not being held up by strings or anything like that. It hovered in the air for a moment, reminding me strongly of something that hovers. And then suddenly, a beam of light burst from it, which stretched down to the ground. And then, even more suddenly, uh, a mysterious figure appeared at the base of the light. An extraterrestrial. It turned and began to walk. It appeared to be heading towards a nearby nightclub. It entered. And then suddenly, yet another sudden thing suddenly happened. What on earth, or otherwise, was going on? I decided to investigate. Upon entering the club, I was met by a horrific sight. Young people. But what had happened to them? What was that strange music? They had been hypnotized. Somehow the music had taken them over. They looked happy, joyful. The poor devils. corner of my eye, I noticed the alien running for the door. I could shoot it. As I exited the building, I realised I was too late. But he wasn't getting away that easily. 
I decided to run to my lab. Which was in the other direction. Upon entering the outer office of my laboratory, I was met by the sight of my secretary, Miss Demina. She's French. She didn't have any experience, but she had excellent credentials. Although I'm not totally convinced that she's actually typing. I entered my lab. I managed to locate the flying saucer with a specialist device that we in the profession call a telescope. From the saucer's trajectory, trajectory traje from the direction the saucer was heading, I deduced that it could only be heading to one place. Mars. Over the weeks that followed, the Martians continued to hypnotise the population with their strange music. sing hymn number 108. I remained relatively untroubled by the events until one night when I was returning to my lab and I heard more of that strange music coming from inside. They'd gotten misdemeanor. Martian's evil plan. If only I knew what their plan was. That was the groovy sound of A into G with their new hit single, Peyton Flowers in My Mind, number 22 and a half, which has now reached platinum status after only two weeks. So that was their plan. They planned to hypnotize the population of the world into listening to their strange music so that they would buy all the records, so that the records would go to platinum status and the Martians would receive all the platinum records. They were going to steal the Earth's supply of platinum, one record at a time. And enslave the human race. And they were going to enslave the human race. 
How ingenious. There was only one thing to do. I would have to go to Mars and stop them. But how? I entered my lab. And now we've got the psychedelic sounds of spiritual belief system with their new song, Flash the Same People. Once I entered my lab, I began work on designing a rocket to take me to Mars. There was no way I could build such an object in time. So where could I find something that I could easily turn into a rocket? The next morning, I went down to Big Ben to begin turning it into a Mars-bound rocket ship, with all the necessary equipment. After making my way into Big Ben totally unnoticed, I went to work. Once I had finished, I climbed to the top of the clock to begin the launch. With great haste, I made my way towards Mars. Meanwhile, back on Earth, uh, over a bit, a bit more, back a bit, uh, that's it. Meanwhile, back on Earth, the situation was getting steadily worse. Good evening, and here is the news. The war is over, and the world is purple. 
even some of the Earth's own musical groups were beginning to succumb to the power of the strange music. continued to hurtle towards Mars until my path was blocked by a rather large object. Mars. I stepped out of my interstellar timepiece and took my first look at the surface of Mars. It was a nice place, but it had no atmosphere. I began to search the planet for the Martian's base of operations, which took me over four hours. But for the sake of saving time, I'll just do this. There. Now that didn't feel like four hours, did it? I had found nothing until I came to the edge of a ridge and made a startling discovery. A rock. But it was a very large rock, so I decided to investigate. I was just contemplating its extreme rockiness when the front of the rock began to slide open. And there it was. The Martian super duper psychedelic computer the source of the music's strange hypnotic powers. The Martians had seen me, but they couldn't reach me in time. All I had to do was activate my secret weapon. Now that's just cheating. As the Martians began to turn their attention back to the super duper psychedelic computer, I realized that they were soon to have a secret weapon of their own. barely stand it. It was all I could do to stop myself from succumbing to the music's hypnotic powers. But somehow something was protecting me from its coolness. I think it may have been my bow tie. If that ship were to reach Earth, it would be disastrous. I had to resort to desperate measures. Look! They fell for the old shout look to distract your captors, then reach for your portable music device to play the squarest music imaginable to disable the super duper psychedelic computer. Trick. As the Martians began to abandon their now useless weapon, I decided to bid a hasty retreat back to Earth. As I headed back towards good old planet Earth, everybody gradually returned to normal. I 
returned to Earth victorious. Everything was back to normal. Now all I had to do was pop over to the palace and receive my knighthood, and then pick up my Nobel Prize and I'll be back to my lab by tea time. Hello, hello, hello. You're Nick, mate. Typical. Two weeks to life for flying a major London landmark without a license. Still, it worked out for the best in the end. All the hypnotised people were returned to normal, although the music style caught on, even without the hypnotic rays. And that symbol the Martians were wearing caught on as well, although it had to be slightly altered due to copyright reasons. Even though nobody believed me, I know in my heart that I saved the human race from certain destruction. To think, if it wasn't for me, the whole human race could have become happy and peaceful. Now, if only I could think of some sort of moral to end on.